so if you if you can just give us a little bit of information about the coach support that's happening at, at Dumbarton yeah. Carnegie, um, Callum, that would be great. Well, I mean, I was thinking about when you when you got in touch, I got I was thinking what what has happened because it's been quite a sort of uh, an organic process, if you like. I mean, we do have a club development plan, and we did say we want to. But it was very quantifiable. It was very much like we want more of this, we want more of that. And that, I think, um, as you would expect, most plans do. We never really look at the kind of substance of what we're doing. And I was up there anyway with the kids. And we were talking earlier about just some of the things we've experienced as coaches and probably some of the things we've, mistakes we've made as coaches as well. And I was watching some of that adult kind of experience being downloaded into the kids. I just thought we could do a bit of a better job, I thought. And so... I think uh, at the same time, Scottish hockey, you know, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I, what I really, what I really liked was this change and shift towards the golden thread. I think there was something I thought, well, there's something in this, and and, and I watched a lot of the YouTube um, clips, and it was short, really simple. And I thought, you know, there's there's content here that I could maybe share with the club that see. So that's kind of really how it kind of started. When I went up, um, I watched my lad who's played a ton of football, plays quite a bit of hockey and whatnot, but mainly football. And he was trying to be, the two coaches, bless them, were trying to explain a 2v1 to a group of under 10s. Now, um, that that didn't really work because they just didn't, and I was thinking correctly, we, we, we've got to do, we've got to be able to do a better job with this. So kind of looking at what we're currently doing, not all over the pitch, but in certain areas, and then looking at what the content was maybe offline, seeing what we could try and do. I think we had a couple of conversations thinking, well, what's what support is available to us as a club? Because we were through DCI, we connected in through Scottish Hockey, we connected in through the um, the local active, active school cluster. So it seems like the, the club were becoming better integrated and not so fixed, not such a fixed mindset, if you like, about what we can and can't do. And we really, with Gordon as kind of main club coordinator, we've got like a really open minded. Uh, personally, I said, okay, let's try and move things on. So the first thing I did was I spoke to a colleague of mine and we I basically I just took a list of 10 things I thought were relevant to coaches. And then we had a meeting down in uh, Dublin firm and, and the 10 or 11 coaches came along and we just asked them, A, what they knew about the subject on the list and then how and rate how important it was to them. And on that list were things like, um, uh, you know, understanding of fitness or tactics and there was there was um uh a golden thread was on there and all of them said they had very low awareness of it but then they were motivation to learn more and so we talked it through and that in very simple terms was a kind of the beginning of just a kind of a a, a nudge gradual support for our our volunteers you know and um from that we just did a commitment of maybe one or two sessions a kind of one or two coach support sessions but again we, we didn't want to do two or three hours with them because they didn't want to commit the time and we so we'd like half an hour maybe two or three times a season if that and really what that led down to was just they were expecting to and say okay guys uh, i'm going to tell you everything i know about coaching and you're going to listen and of course i don't know a huge amount about coaching i said well wh why don't we just talk about a certain subject yeah. right what what do what do kids enjoy? Could be one of the subjects. Um, what do you know about what what is it within Golden Thread? Do we do we workshop if you like two or three? So I didn't tell them. We just discussed it, and um, that was like what you found there is that a lot of the people involved they're they're pretty sensible human beings. I mean they're pretty successful in their lives. They you know, they they work and they all the everything involved with that. So we we kind of just built on these ideas of discussion, and I think you would call it community of practice. I think people just love, they love, they love to talk about what I'm doing now. They love to talk about what they do and how they do it. And they're really open to learning. And what we found was that there was, the, what what Golden Thread was all about was actually already happening, but in very specific pockets of the club. So there's a very experienced coach called um, uh, Keith, um, uh, what's Keith's second name? Foster. Uh, Forster, good not. So bad. So Keith uh, was doing, been doing this, this in the hall for ages. You know, like the kids turn up, they he doesn't talk to them. He gives them a ball. 
and they go and whack a ball for 10 minutes until everyone arrives. And then he gets them into a kind of semi-structured kind of um, AOS type game, maybe 2v2. And then they, they do have a little coaching point around maybe holding the and then they go back to the games. And you know what? The numbers stay really, really high. And then what we're noticing when they came outside from the hall with this brilliant coaching experience that they had, and they were coming into a bit more of an adult, if you like, which is ridiculous. A lot of, they only come out at 10, 10 years old. They started, there was there was queuing, there was explanation, there was coaches trying to explain concepts that are quite challenging, like 2v1, um, 3v2, uh, how to hit the ball, talking it through, and, and you just, and numbers drop away. So we kind of felt that we could probably do a different job with that. So we we kind of themed based on the two or three priorities that came out that first meeting. We just put them in, into the group. But I would say that that stuff, I wouldn't say inf- more the discussion around the stuff uh, that we that we that we would care about influenced what was happening, and primarily that being um, game game based practice, not games for the sake of it, but coaching themes through the games. And I don't think that's particularly revolutionary, but that that seemed to hold the attention of the children at a much much greater level um, than than previous. And um, and see your your kind of half hour meeting community of practice sessions were they face to face throughout the week or were they on online? No, this is pre COVID, so this would be this is face to face. This would be like our training starts at five forty five. So can we meet at quarter past five? Okay. And we'll meet in the community room, have a cup of tea. Yeah. The half an hour wasn't really long enough, but and we didn't get all the coaches along because what we're finding was I think it's quite. You, you probably over focus on the coaches that are not doing what you think or what the system thinks it should be doing and that becomes quite quite exhausting because you're trying to change quite a fixed behavior and what you what you i think we did really well is that we 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 kind of built on it wasn't a case of me hey guys i've got this new way of doing things i was like hey, look do you want to see what keith's doing because what he's doing is i think for what it's worth is absolutely is absolutely fabulous can we do more of that and, you know, without going into the science or the philosophy or the research, no need for that. And they're like, hey, well, yeah, you're right. So, and they found it quite, uh, I think, I know you maybe need to ask Doug and Drew, and, but they were like, um, yeah, of course, it'd be great for me not to have to feel like I've got to coach the left-right drag. Because if you watch a game, kids are doing left-right drags a lot, or they're doing V-drags without any instruction, just because there's an obstacle, which is another person, kind of, they, they want to go right and that obstacle's in their way, then, they you know, out. yeah. And then we also, I was, we also brought a guy, um, his wife, Rachel, plays in our ones, and I think she plays in our ones, and Gareth is a primary P teacher, uh, based in, in your neck of the woods, in somewhere around Tullibody. And um, his coaching, was was fantastic you know he was turn up he had a a great idea for a fun game you know because he's got this four years playbook of ideas and he got them moving real quick uh, this is and he worked primarily with the girls also under under 14 girls so my daughter was involved in that and it was like we really, really love gas coaching it's brilliant the sessions are so then you look at what keith does and you look at what gareth did and we could probably bring some of those really good elements in and then also you know, take that responsibility off the coach to say, teach them how to reverse stick hit, you know, 11 years old on one hour a week practice, you know, you just go figure. So we just kind of like, like try to kind of, I suppose I don't know what the best way of putting it is, like try and build, it's just trying to support the best practice that we did. Yeah, no, that's great. And, um, and at, at what point kind of, along that so you've got them to chat about their coaching you've got them to observe others from within the club that's maybe deemed to be be better practice with engagement of of the youngsters um what what's kind of gone on from from that is there other things that you've tried to utilize to keep them connected or yeah i mean we've we've um we so as you know as part of that we um we got so we did some we did the, the workshops with you to cut into the club because I, I do think there's a point where we do need some formalized coach education work but again that was really that was really fascinating for me because that workshop was not i'm clean i'm here to teach you how to coach 
It was, I, I'm, here, I'm here to facilitate you to recognize and reflect on your own coaching behavior and see where you can make slight changes to work. So that was really, that, that, was, that was quite a, that's quite a big moment, I think, because it kind of, it, up until that point, probably like a lot of coaching in Scotland, I'm thinking, what do I need, to, where do I need to go and learn or how do I go back into learn more stuff? And it was, do I need to pick up a book that's going to tell me stuff that I might or might not know? Or could we work with someone in the system who could kind of help us to kind of reflect and learn more about ourselves? And I thought that was really, really good. Obviously, it taught us the basics and some built on some principles of that um, that golden thread. Um, so we did that. That that again, that shifted on things a bit more. Um, off the back of that, we did a, um, a club survey um, in March 2019, and that asked some questions around. Uh, I looked at it this again this morning because I'm going to send it back out to the guys. But asked some questions like, "Is it and based on the principal stuff? Like, is your session fun? Um, do you get a lot of touches on the ball? Um, um, does your coach encourage you?" Um, there's other things like, does your coach explain the purpose of the training session? Um, and again, what we got back was a kind of a varied amount of feedback. It, a lot of it, um, not perhaps what we want to hear, maybe what we could see. So again, we put that back out of the coaches saying, look, okay, this isn't me saying, I'm now here judging jury on your coaching practice. You know, people giving up their free time, you know, when they could be spending it with their family, they're here standing in front of the rain, helping the club develop and then I'm going to come down and, and, and critique that I think that would be right so but getting subtle feedback in from the players and we did that from under eights up to men's ones and twos and we got you know again just feedback you know reflect it's feedback try and change your practice built around a kind of uh, an established model of games based uh, principles which is what you guys are kind of um, um, kind of promoted I think well that was up to pre-COVID, so it seemed to be moving in the right direction, I think. That's cool. Thanks for that. Is, uh, have you got kind of some ideas of plans for, for future or, or have you kind of just got to COVID and now there's lots of other things obviously happening to get back on the pitch and return to kind of sport at the moment? So. Uh, um, yeah, well, I mean, again, it's, I suppose this idea like, uh, is it planning? Basically, we want to try and basically reinforce some of the things that we've been doing over the last season and a half, yeah. right? So we want to um, revisit, I think, because again, it's not we're not saying to people, you've got to become a level four master coach. We just want to kind of revisit the good practice you're doing. So I think we had plans for you to come back in. This was pre-COVID, um, um, to come back in the club and observe some practice and give some feedback. So again, you know as you know a lot of these clubs are quite protected gated wee communities and the idea of like opening it up to a degree of um observation and potential what, what they might perceive as criticism is actually quite a leaves you a bit vulnerable i think but i think when we did that the first time it wasn't about saying well you guys aren't very good i'm going to teach you to get good it's like well here how how can you learn to do it a little bit better than what you're currently doing so we were really open to those ideas I think um, we're still a little behind in terms of goalie development. Um, I th we've got goalie coaches, but I think games-based practice and activity, I think a lot of goalie coaching is still very uh, verbalised with some, some closed technical drills. Um, I think there's probably some opportunities we've got to do that, especially if we're going to try and get younger kids to put their pads on. Like how much fun, that should be a lot of fun, that position. And I know it is. It should be a lot of fun. How how could we make it more fun to get more more of these kids rather than you know just one or two per year what i put the pads on um and i think we will definitely go back out with the club survey and just i suppose just try and try and keep that sort of informal content going um I'm, I'm not if i'm being honest i'm not massively sure whether if i post something on facebook people look at that and go right, I'm going to try that. I'm just not sure if that's, I don't know whether that works or not. I think what does work is definitely those conversations, you know, that let's meet half an hour, have a cup of tea, talk about, and we had a brilliant conversation. We just talked about what is talent 
because I mean, I'm so I'm probably going on here a slightly different topic, but in our club, we've got this brilliant habit of spotting someone who's really good at a young age and absolutely whipping them through the teams as young as possible. And that might work, but it doesn't work a lot of the time. And then what you get is you get this poor wee lad or girl who's like 16, sitting in a change room, surrounded by adults, wondering what they're doing there. And their development seems to plateau and they never seem to progress through one or two do, because you've got some, you know, Dan Pearson is you know, probably the most gifted we like, but he would do he would do well anywhere. I mean, he's just a he's a, just a brilliant player. So what we said is like, what do you think talent is? We had this brilliant discussion about what is talent, what's not, and what we found was, you know, this this various understanding about we probably don't know what it is. We think we can recognise it. Is it the big tall kid? Is it the is it the kid who's quite technical and all this kind of stuff? And so what we kind of agreed was that we would just try. And the reason why we had that conversation was that we needed to we needed to make sure especially because we had a load of girls coming through, we needed to make sure that we could say to them, look, it's okay for these girls to stay 14, 15, 16 in one team. Pretty much exactly what um, Janet's done in the borders, you know, keeping these groups of girls together in groups of teams and then bringing them through, if, if that's the right word, or moving them through the teams as they grow as a group, as opposed to thinking that clubs have got some supernatural talent for spotting someone who might be the next Lawrence Doxley. That's a bit of an old reference from the next. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> doing, and then they're doing this and then they're, and then, so we said, okay, so trying to maybe unpick some of these classic club mistakes. So I think we, we'll try and rather than set a plan of saying, right, we're going to discuss these five topics. I think we'll, we'll, we'll just have a, a look at what we're doing and then try and pick stuff out of what we see. And then when you come back and we say, okay, clean, this is the things that we're looking at. This is what we've seen. Can you help us with these challenges? As opposed to going, right, let's try and get all these coaches into this very specific coaching gap. Because that didn't work. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of what the, what the idea is, you know, the kind of general growth is. Um, and I think the only other thing of we really need to sort of figure out and not sure is if we could do the same with umpires and volunteers i think rather than i'm not too sure how we can move towards it if we're looking at um how we've made playing fun for these guys and how we could maybe moving into some of these more um supportive roles make the opportunities for these guys and not doing it and saying okay well it's a the whole two evenings a week that you've got to commit to this it's a half an hour here half an hour there could you use technology i don't know so uh, and that's planned but we've i know we're really clear i mean we've just created a drew and doug you know the guys um they've just created that we talked about earlier about they've created this 15 um so they're going into the east development league so we're 14 year olds can play and so seven or eight of our kids are going into that you know the girls team is created because what we're finding is i think I think fun, the, the proof in the pudding is that basically we're finding is that we're not losing that many kids, if any. So something's happening. We don't quite know maybe what because we don't haven't done any detailed research or anything, but something's happening where kids are not dropping out the way they used to. So they're finding yes. something, I don't know, I mean, something's changing where they're coming along. They're having a lot of energy. They're having a fun energy session somewhere in their brains going, a bit like we all do with our sports while we still play. We're thinking somewhere in our brains going, I quite like this. I'm going to go along to training. And there's a bit of a kind of an ingrained way of thinking. I think some of that happens because maybe we, what we experienced as kids probably was the same. You know, we had lots of fun and lots of encouragement, you know, n- not a lot of queuing, you know, a real good focus of good peer group, good elder folk. And then that kind of really keeps you in that, I think. Um, but I'm guessing, I mean, I'm just making an assumption. 